I think the chain rule might be the slickest derivative rule, but it's also a rule that people very often screw up. And one of the situations where people go wrong a lot is when you've got a radical function when you've got square roots or other gnarly roots. So today we're going to go over these two examples. Here's a function f of x, here's g of x, and we'll take the derivative of both of them. Go ahead and give it a try yourself if you're feeling brave. We'll start with f. Now the idea for taking the derivative of these guys is pretty straightforward. When you've got a radical, you're going to want to rewrite it with a rational or fractional exponent. In the first case, with f of x, we've got the square root of 3x plus 2. The outside function is the square root, and the inside function is this linear 3x plus 2. So to take the derivative of this, which is super easy, I'm just going to start by rewriting that square root as a rational exponent. And a square root is the same as an exponent of 1 half. And so this becomes 3x plus 2 to the power of one half. Now it's really easy to see how the power rule is, excuse me, how the chain rule is going to work out. We'll start with power rule, that's the derivative of the outside function. The outside function is a thing to the power of one half, and then we'll just have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So let's go for it. Here is f prime of x. Start by taking the derivative of the outside function. That's power rule. So we take the exponent of one half and we bring it down as a factor. Now this is important. Make sure you don't change the inside function. At this step where we take the derivative of the outside function, the inside function is unchanged. So in here we've got 3x plus 2. Then standard power rule, you've got to reduce that exponent by 1. Now, 1 half minus 1 is negative half, and so this exponent becomes negative half. We're not done yet, though. Remember, this is chain rule, so now we've got to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of 3x plus 2 is just 3, so we'd have a multiply by 3 out there, but I'm just going to slide that factor of 3 over here and put it in the numerator of the 1 half function. That's f prime. You may prefer to write f prime without the negative exponent and also without fractional exponents, so putting things back in terms of radicals, and that would look like this. We still have the 3 in the numerator, we've got that 2 in the denominator, but then this guy to the power of negative half, that gets sent down to the denominator, and a power of one half, again, is a square root. So that's just another way of writing f prime. Let's go ahead and move on to taking the derivative of g of x. I'll have to erase this to make room, but first, the start is really simple. Remember, if you've got a radical function, you're going to want to rewrite it with a rational or fractional exponent. And so, in this case, notice we have a fifth root. So, in the same way that a square root was a power of one-half, a fifth root is a power of one-fifth. But then the thing inside the fifth root is being raised to the power of two. So, we'll just have to rewrite it with an exponent of two times a fifth, or two-fifths. And so this will become, I'll try to write it small so it fits, this becomes 2x squared minus 5x plus 1, and then it's to the power of 2, but because it was in a fifth root, that 2 gets divided by 5. Now it is straightforward enough to proceed with the power rule. All right, so for the chain rule, we start by taking the derivative of the outside function. This dog just totally spooked me. Uh, <laughs> And uh, the outside function, it's a thing to a power. So we have to drop that power of two-fifths down as a factor. And then this thing which was being raised to the power of two-fifths, the inside does not get changed. Remember that. That's what I see a lot of people screw up. So we still have 2x squared minus 5x plus 1. That power of two-fifths gets reduced by 1. Be careful here. 2 fifths minus 5 fifths is negative 3 fifths. So that's the new exponent is negative 3 fifths. 
Now we're not done. Remember, we've got to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. That's the last step. The derivative of this guy is just a couple applications of the power rule. That's going to become 4x minus 5. So that's what goes over here. And that's it. That is g prime. And again, I will rewrite it in a way that you may prefer. Just doing a math lesson, don't mind me. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Wow, very nice. I, I like to come out in the woods. You remember any of this? Math was my favorite. I got bored, so. Okay. <laughs> you can still do a lot with a little chalkboard. Thanks. All right, and there is g prime rewritten without negative exponents and without fractional exponents. The factor of two and the 4x minus 5 are still up here in the numerator. I've, of course, distributed the 2 across the 4x minus 5, giving us 8x minus 10. And then this negative exponent, negative 3 fifths, sends this guy down to the denominator. However, the division by 5 in the exponent lets us know that this is going to be a fifth root, and then we can just pop that exponent of 3 inside the radical. We could put it outside too if we preferred. I think it looks better inside, but either way is the same. And then of course, this denominator of 5 we see down there as well. Don't want to forget that. And that's really all there is to it. When you're using the chain rule with these radical functions, you just want to make sure that you rewrite them with a rational exponent. And then it's pretty straightforward. You use the power rule and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. That's how it works. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions.